Builds in the great state of Texas. I'm your host, Phil, and this is part two of a video series I'm doing about uh, making your own ammo box, boom box, and I'm taking you step by step and showing you how to turn this plastic ammo box into a Bluetooth box with the radio built into it. Now, this is part two. If you missed part one, if you're just seeing this for the first time, please go back and watch part one of the football video boombox build and this is going to be part two we're going to be covering getting ready for paint and after we do the paint prep we're going to be drilling the holes in the next video I wish I had more time to shoot both videos today but it's been a very very busy weekend I got a lot going on right now so we're just going to take you step by step and show you how to prepare for paint now the reason I'm saying that is well, hello Duke Duke the Wondercat's here with us today. Watch out, Duke, you're in the camera shot. Uh, what we need to do is, when they... Oh, come on, Duke. When they manufacture this plastic, I'm not 100% sure the reason why. It might be for UV protection or something. They put a special coating on the plastic. And it's all of the plastic to, uh, I guess, protect it. It might be something in the plastic. I'm not sure what this coating is exactly, but I do know that paint does not like to stick to this coating and we need to roughen up this surface and get this coating off so our paint will stick to the surfaces that we want to paint and of course we want to paint this entire box so the two things you're going to need is number one you're going to need to get some scotch bright pads and I'm sure they sell these at the grocery store I actually got these are heavy duty you got these at Home Depot they're only a few dollars and I actually found these near the cleaning supplies at Home Depot, the, bro the brooms, the mops, and things like that. So you're going to need a green scotch bright pad. And the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need a tack cloth. And I found these near the paint. And this is going to take off all the uh, residue and things off the box. And we'll get it ready for paint and get ready to paint the box. So anyway, let's go ahead and... Uh, take one of these scotch bright pads here and what you want to do is you want to kind of go in one direction you don't want to make a bunch of swirl marks like that you really want to go one direction and I just basically start at the largest surface and go like that and you really just want to put a tube on here to get that coating off good going Duke now some people might be asking, why don't you go ahead and drill your holes before you do the, 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 put the, take the coating off so you don't have to sand all the extra parts. Well, you could do that, but what I found is when you have these large holes and small holes in here, sometimes the, the pad might kind of catch on those holes. And to me, I find it easier to sand with just one smooth surface and then drill my holes after I'm done with the Scotch-Brite pad. But if you want to spend quite a bit of time here, put some pressure on here, and you want to make sure you get every every surface, and try to go again the same direction that you can. Now, this is going to take you probably about a half hour to do this, so I'm not going to do the whole box. Now, when you have small sections like this right here, just kind of go in there and uh, do the best you can. But you got to hit every surface that's going to have paint. Because if you don't, your paint's not going to stick. And it's going to come off. And you're not going to be happy. Also, don't forget about the corners. Right there. Make sure you get the corners. And get all the edges that you can. And don't forget about that inside edge. Right there. And again, now if you're going to paint the latches and the handle, you need to go ahead and scuff those up as well. And that's what I'm going to be doing. And I found with some of my other paint jobs, that's where I had a problem with the paint flaking off, was right in here. So make sure you kind of bend that pad back a little bit and really get in there and really get every single surface that's going to have paint on it. Now, if you just want to leave your box black, that's fine too. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. This one's got some residue from the sticker. 
that came on the box. But if you, if you are going to paint plastic, you really have to take this coating off. And I learned the hard way with my, my first build. I didn't do this. And I had a real bad trouble of the paint peeling off. And I was really not too happy about that. So, again, this is going to take about a half hour. So don't worry, I'm not going to subject you to the whole half hour watching me sand this down. But again, if you are going to paint the handle or any, any plastic parts on here, especially the handle, that's one thing I noticed when I didn't paint the handle and people put their hands on here, the moisture from the hands caused the paint to come off immediately. So especially if you're going to paint the handle, Make sure you give it a good sanding. Because any paint where people are going to be touching it, the latches, the handle, the paint's going to come off. And you can start to see, you know, where you're cutting into that, that layer there. You can see where you've been. So I'm going to keep doing this. And once it gets all done, I'll show you the next step. So see you in just a minute. Okay, well we're back, and as you can see, I've uh, got done hitting this every surface with the Scotch Bright pad. Now I don't do the bottom because nobody's going to see the bottom, so I don't really care. But I want to show you the difference. If you can see here where I didn't hit the Scotch Bright pad, it's kind of shiny, and you can see here it's kind of got really dull now. I've really knocked down that finish and got that coating off there, so. That's uh, how it's going to look. Just make sure you hit every single surface with the scotch Bright pad. Again, try not to do any swirl marks. Try to go back and forth and back and forth. And again, the handle, you get, I mean, every little surface you got to get. Now, that's going to leave quite a bit of residue on here. You need to get off of that before you get ready to paint. You want to kind of do it before you can drill your holes. So go ahead and take one of these tack cloths and it'll make your fingers kind of sticky, So, but that comes off of soap and water. And just go ahead and go over the entire surface. You can see we got Mr. Duke over here joining me today. But just go ahead and uh, make sure you give every surface a good wipe down. Try to get in all the cracks and crevices. And that way you're going to have a really, really good paint job. Especially in these uh, little corners right here. I don't know if you, can, you probably can't see it on camera. I've got a lot of little bits of green dust up inside there from that scotch Bright pad. Really uh, go in there. And you can see here I've got all kinds of green dust in there as well from the scotch Bright pad. And this, this tack cloth is really good about getting all that off of there. But again, if you don't get this coating off of here, your project's not going to come out that good. And you're not going to be happy because the paint job will peel off. And, and you're going to be mad at yourself for not taking this extra step. But painting plastic is not that hard. I've done it a few times and I'm going to show you an example in just a minute here. And uh, I'm mean, getting here all those little cracks and crevices. We've really got a lot of dust in there. Anyway, that's about it. Now, you don't have to paint your box. I've noticed a lot of guys that have the green ammo boxes, they want to keep that green ammo look, and that's fine. But if you have a plastic box, it's going to come green or black, and you know, you want to, you know, put a little personality to it. Now, also, I like to paint my accessories. Um, this is a voltmeter with the uh, USB ports. For charging and what I like to do is paint this little trim piece that goes around here and just kind of gives a little extra pop because I'm going to paint the box white and I'm going to do Houston Texans color so the box is going to be white the handle is, is going to be navy blue the latches are going to be navy blue and this part here on the back is going to be red uh, kind of just make it pop a little bit let me show you an example of that right here this out of the way. This is a build I did about a month ago 
this is my Superman box build that I made for a guy, but due to some unfortunate circumstances, he couldn't get it right now, so I'm just holding on to it for him. But you can see how the red and the blue really, really pop. And it looks really, really good. You can see the handle, handle and the latches here against the blue. Just really makes it stand out. And again, here's the example of uh, painting that trim piece. So again, it's just a way to add a little, little pop to your project, especially if you're going to sell them. It's really a good way to uh, you know, show off your project. And I even painted the uh, base tube. Now again, same with this here. It is plastic. You need to follow the same procedure. Before you paint it, you have to hit it with a tack cloth and a scotch Brite pad. And I think you'll uh, see some good results. Now, it may not always be perfect. Um, you can't tell from here, but right here I had a little problem where the paint did peel up. Apparently I didn't uh, sand it down too good. So I went ahead and had to tape everything off and repaint it. And the patch is invisible. But um, it may not be perfect the first time you do it. But it's going to look really good. There's kind of a preview of coming attractions of what you can do with your stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching my video today. Uh, part three, we're going to be drilling the holes. I'm going to be showing you how to properly measure for the holes and get everything drilled before you paint. Um, you really want to drill your holes before you paint so you don't chip your paint. <laughs> Ask me how I know. But again, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned some great tips from me. And um, again, we have it all sanded down, have the tack cloth taken care of it. And uh, next step we're going to be doing is we're going to drill the holes here. We're going to be drilling some holes for the switches, for the meter, USB port, and of course the holes for the speakers. And we're going to put the FM radio right here on the top, but I'm going to show you how to measure and cut the holes for that as well. So anyway, until next time, this is Duke. Say hi, Duke. He's having a good time today. And Phil with DIY Boom Boxes in Texas. And again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm trying to put as many videos out as soon as I possibly can. Like I said, I've got a lot of things going on right now. And I do have a regular job, so I, I stay pretty busy. So, uh, again, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for all your support. I want to thank all the people I've learned from. Again, check out my thank you video. I've referenced a couple of other guys that have really taught me a lot. And I want you to check out their channel as well, please. Because those guys have some great information and some great things you can learn for from, especially 123Toid. Check his page out. I mean, his, excuse me, his channel out. And he's got some great information. And um, also check out my Facebook page. It's I Love All Things Radio. We'll be happy to have you. Once again, have a great week, and we'll see you next time.